What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Kilo Loco. And today I'm going to be talking about how you can get hired at a small company or a startup. All right, for all of y'all devs that are looking to get hired at a small company or startup and, you know, you might have all kinds of different reasons why you want to do this, you know, have a little bit more control or, you know, you just don't like being a corporate cog or any of these things. It's just a little bit different when it comes to applying for a small company compared to like a larger or medium sized company. So I just transitioned from a small company to a large company. And there were times where we were going through hiring processes that I was uh, somewhat involved with. And then towards the end, when I was essentially about to make the leap to the larger company, I was kind of involved with the idea of getting, you know, somebody brought on board to replace myself. And, you know, I have a little bit of experience when it comes to knowing what a, a startup and what a small company are essentially looking for. Now, the first thing that you're going to actually want to do when it comes to getting hired at one of these types of companies is essentially you have to find them. I mean, these are these are small companies. These are either startups or like they don't they don't they probably don't have much of a presence, which is probably why they're a small company or they're just located in one specific area. They're not a giant chain or something like that. So you have to find these companies if you can't find them. How are you going to work for them? So smaller companies can be a wide variety of things. You know, it could be a startup. It could be just a small company that's been doing business for a while. That might be in a specific location. It could be a lot of different variations of a company. Right. But one thing that's probably going to happen across all these different small companies is that they're probably going to be posting in pretty generic areas to find somebody to bring on board uh, something that's more common to normal job industries. And what I mean by this is that you're probably going to see posts on, you know, Indeed, Monster.com, Cybercoders, uh, Craigslist, things like this. And, uh, you know, large companies do this as well, but you'll actually see small companies do this um, more frequently just because they don't know which resources to go after. And then on top of that, since they're a small company, probably haven't been heard of by many engineers, then they're probably going to be going anywhere that they can find engineers as opposed to letting those engineers come to them. Another way that you might be able to find a company is through recruiters. Sometimes they'll hire or they'll send their listing to, you know, a recruiting agency. And that's also another way that they'll advertise the fact that they're looking for new candidates. So just keep that in mind. You can find recruiters spammed all across LinkedIn. That's like where they live. So, yeah, <laughs> but in my personal opinion, the best way to find somebody that's looking to hire an engineer is just to go to meetups, because if you go to meetups, there's almost always somebody that's looking to hire somebody. They always come with the idea and they're always looking to hire someone. It's it's usually at least one person from my personal experience. Now, I know that everybody can't always go to meetups, but that's one of the easiest ways to find somebody that's looking to hire. All right. Great. You found somebody. Now, how do you actually impress them? Well, that's going to have to be through a resume and a portfolio. Now, regardless of whichever type of company you're looking for, a resume is always going to be a good idea. You know, you you almost always have to have a resume. That's that's pretty much a given. Right. But as far as a portfolio, I honestly feel that a portfolio is going to go much further with a smaller company or a startup compared to a large company, large to medium sized company. And the reason for that is because if you're going to be working for a startup or a small company, then they're actually going to have the time to do a little bit of research on you. And since they're probably not getting a huge influx of applications, guess what? they're going to have some time to be looking at each and every individual that's going to actually be applying for the position because they probably don't have too many candidates to choose from. So what I'm saying is that your portfolio has to be on point. You want to have something that's very visual, something that's going to help them understand what your skill sets are, and they're going to be able to see if your skill sets aligns with what they're actually trying to accomplish. So making sure that your portfolio is very visual, making sure that it has your past projects, all of them, you should be putting up all of them, making them look nice and pretty and small, short descriptions. You want to just focus on visual content and talk about 
in a, in a very, very short paragraph, uh, what it is that the, what the project is and how you did it and maybe what technologies were involved. Keep it super short. Somebody from a startup or a small company sees that they're going to be very impressed. And, you know, especially if you take your time and put the effort into making it look all nice, they're going to, they're going to love it. And it's really going to help you get ahead of anybody else that's applying. Now, if you take that step further, get that app up on the app store and they can download it. And that's right there on your resume where they can like download it. That You have like a short bit.ly link or a QR code and they can just download your app. That's really going to help because now they're able to play and interact with something that you actually built. And if it just happens to line up to be with something that they actually like to use or that would actually be helpful for them. Guess what? That's going to put you ahead of the curve, baby. So now that you've impressed them, what else do you have to do? So you found them, you impressed them. Now you got to talk to them. Now, once you get a phone call with one of these people at the at the startup or the small company, it's your job to impress them. You have to essentially build on top of what they already think about you and you have to show them that you're the right person for the job. And a couple of ways that you can do this are by simply knowing exactly what the company is looking to do. So if you've done your research on the company and you kind of see what they're currently doing and you kind of see where they're going, then having that information ready and like having done your research will help you in your conversation when you're trying to explain to them how you're going to be beneficial to their company. Essentially, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to talk about how you're going to solve their problems and also talk about what experience you have where it might have solved a similar problem in the past if you got it. And, you know, just really think hard about the things that you've done and see where there might be some overlap where you might have done something that's not exactly what they're looking for, but some of the ideas can still be applied to help fix their problem. Another thing that's super important is that you set kind of realistic expectations for them, because if they're a smaller company and, you know, you might be one of the only or one of the very few people that they're hiring as an engineer, then you might need to walk them through the steps of what they're actually looking to do. So if they're looking to get an app out into the app store and it's supposed to do X, Y and Z, you know, if you can talk about all the things that are involved, Involved in regards to doing and accomplishing X, Y, and Z, and how X, Y, and Z isn't just the entire alphabet, but there's A, B, C all the way, you know, all the way through Z. If you can talk about all the things that are related to their goals and what they actually are trying to accomplish and the stuff that they can't see because they're not too technical, then that's also going to help you out because it's going to show that you have some expertise in the field where you know, it's not just clear on, you know, I just want to get an iOS app out there, but they don't understand that you need to have a back end and things like that. Now, expanding on that whole concept of explaining what needs to happen from A to Z. If you have a whole lot of experience in all kinds of different fields, like let's say you're an iOS engineer, right? That's great. You know, you know how to make iOS apps, but most of the time you need to have like some type of back end or there needs to be some type of communication between devices or something like that, right? If you have those skills where it's not just specifically creating only an iOS app, then that's going to make you more valuable to the company. Small companies generally means small budgets. And that means if they can get you to work on two to three or four different jobs for that company and they only have to pay just you, right? That means that they don't have to spend so much money in all these other places. Now, this can be a benefit. It depends on what you want and what you're looking for. You know, if you like to wear a lot of hats or if you just want to focus on one thing. But essentially, a smaller company, a startup is going to try to get you to do a whole lot more. You're going to be more involved. You're going to be more responsible for the entire process of whatever the application is. And, you know, if you can do the back end and the front end, you know, web, iOS, Android, if you could do all those things, then obviously you're much more valuable. Whereas like maybe at a bigger company, that's not something that, you know, it's definitely a huge benefit to have all that knowledge, but that's not something that's going to be actively looked for the same way that a small company or a startup would be looking for. And lastly, if you applied for a job, 
make sure that you're excited about the job. Don't just apply anywhere. I understand that people need to, you know, just work and need to eat. You know, if you're working at McDonald's or Walmart, you know, you're probably not super enthusiastic about that job. But just like any interview, you should show enthusiasm. Now, this goes back to what I was saying about researching the company. You should know what they're all about. You should know which direction they're going and what your responsibilities are. But if you can be excited about the product, that's really going to help. And I really hope that you're only applying for companies that you're actually interested in working for. Like, don't just spam blast your resume out there to every single company that's looking for somebody that kind of resembles you. Look for the companies that you're actually interested in. Now, if you could focus your efforts on applying for only companies that you're actually interested in, this is really going to help you because then you don't have to fake your enthusiasm about the product. You don't have to, you know, BS your way through the interview because nobody really likes that. You know, you're going to end up working there and you're going to be like, Ugh. And nobody wants that, right? You don't want that. They don't want that. You know, you're just going to end up leaving after a short period of time anyway. So just show enthusiasm. Talk about what you like about the product and don't BS it because really you shouldn't be working at a company that you don't like the product. So the last little cherry on top of this entire process, I would say, is to solve a problem for them right now. You should be talking to this individual that you're interacting with on behalf of the company. You should be talking to them and helping them understand what they need to do, whether they go with you or not. And this is something that I've always found to be very beneficial and has actually, you know, helped me get, you know, contracts and things like that is by talking to the individual about what they should expect and where they should go for resources and what they need to learn in regards to, you know, finding the best person for the job and and making sure that their mission is success, successful. And I always phrase it like this. I always say, like, whether you go with me or not, you know, you're going to want to make sure that you do X, Y and Z. And I try to point them in directions of finding resources and things like that. And that usually brings them right back to me a lot of the time. And the reason for that is because if you're just being helpful in general, then you're probably just a good person overall. I think like anybody that's willing to just give expertise away or just like in general, just help somebody else from a person to person basis. I feel is like a better type of human being for doing so because we should all be trying to help each other. I know that obviously you want to get paid for everything that you do, but just remember that you're talking to another human being. And if you can help out that other human, then please do so. So that's pretty much it. That's all I got for you today on how to get hired at a small company. Now, there's probably a couple of other things that I missed. So if you have anything that you think should be included, make sure you leave a comment down below on any extra tips that you have on getting hired at a small company or a startup. That's going to be all for today, y'all. If you like the video, make sure you share it. And I hope that you go out there and keep coding passionately. Later.